Hey guys, in order to do this review for the CG4, I want to show you this EQ1, which is really common with any of the uh, German equatorial budget telescopes, and it's probably the most widely sold, and uh, more people are familiar with it than uh, anything else. And as part of my review, I would like to uh, compare and contrast that with the uh, CG4. And uh, at some point, if uh, that's what you own, then you're more than likely going to want to upgrade. But if you don't really want to spend a whole lot of money, then the CG4 is a good option. Um, beyond that, you're getting computerized and you're, uh, you're starting to get way up there in price. And the CG4 runs roughly around $300. And you can motorize it for uh, just over 100 which is... Uh, fairly budget priced and it's an excellent uh, item so let's get into talking about that okay for starters you notice that the uh, legs on this thing are over an inch and three quarters in diameter really stout um, the hinges are metal and you see this little uh, post right here on the uh, north facing leg that's important and we'll get back to that you see it's a uh, bolts up through the bottom to the uh, to the mount there's a place for the tray and the spreader bar and for those guys that uh, have piers and that sort of thing I'll give you a few measurements here to look at that'll help you uh, decide if, if it'll work for your setup or not and that's the uh, height with the uh, legs non extended center to center roughly three feet and with the legs extended just over four okay fully extended looks like 44 and a half inches to the mount and earlier I discussed that pin that sticks up I want to show you what that's for when you set this up here these two bolts on the side with the knobs you adjust them to uh, basically your azimuth to uh, fine-tune for the North Celestial Pole that's what they're for and uh, you put a little tension on one and release the other and you can uh, you can move the mount while it's on the tripod without having to kick the legs around that's really useful so yeah, that just that's there to make real fine adjustments in uh, azimuth. Okay, you see it's got a built-in bubble level. That's really handy also. You don't have to fumble around with one in the dark. It's, it's included. Really easy to, to use. You see the spreader bar. It's just a standard tray. It's the exact same one that comes with a next star mount, just white. You pull this cap off there's a place for a uh, polar finder scope and that's also really handy if you want precise polar alignment but that's an optional piece of equipment I think it's around 40 bucks average not too bad if you want to do uh, astrophotography that's pretty much a standard item you have to have but the uh, you see there's levers instead of knobs for locking the uh, RA and DEC so for right ascension and declination especially in the dark that's really useful and their uh, the tension on them is great uh, the mount itself turns really smooth it's uh, it's machined rather well to be at the price range that it's at and I'm, I'm rather impressed with that part of it really smooth rotation and uh, really easy to find and handle uh, the knobs that are here you don't have to put a lot of tension on it to lock it but it does lock great and it's uh, it's rated at 15 pounds which means uh, a scope up to 10 pounds would be ideal in my opinion you don't want to push it to the maximum limit but 15 pounds is the rating on this uh, this mount and as you can see there's a safety uh, knob there also for your dovetail rail here you can see the motors 
This is the uh, declination motor and it has a slip clutch so you can make fine adjustments if you need to with it running without interfering with it. Just disengage it with that knob right there and uh, if you had your fine adjustment uh, arm on the other side you could you can make adjustments without worrying about stripping it. You can't do that for RA but you can do it for declination which is still a nice plus. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it but the uh, the aftermarket motors for this setup is uh, a little over a hundred dollars so that's also a, an additional cost. Here you can see how the uh, right ascension motor is hooked up. It's on a flexible cable and uh, it attaches directly to the mount. Here you're seeing the latitude scale. Not really big but definitely usable. But you notice there's uh, two locking bolts instead of one on this setup which is really useful and for fine tuning. It comes with two sets of weights. I forget the exact weight, seven and a half and two and a half, something like that. But I only need the smaller one for my uh, seven and a half pound scope. Here you can see the counterweight bar and it's, uh, it's long winded as far as the threads go which is a really good thing and it's uh, nice and sturdy. The weights themselves uh, they lock really easy and it's got the uh, safety pin at the bottom of it so you don't drop nothing on your feet or anything. Really well made all metal. Uh, no plastic junk here. Uh, really good mount, really good tripod. Here you can see just a uh, Orion ST80A on it. Um, camera's not attached, but really easy to balance this setup. That's just with the one weight, and all, almost all the way to the end of the uh, counterweight bar there. But it easily holds to seven and a half pounds that I put on it, no problem at all. Could easily do a Newtonian around 10 pounds or thereabouts. And this is the battery pack. It's 4D batteries, which is a lot. You're, uh, they're rated at uh, 20 hours, but I haven't confirmed that completely yet. I've used it uh, <clears throat> three or four nights in a row, several hours, and haven't noticed a heavy decline in the, uh, the tracking, so. But here you can see you have uh, eight times, four times, and two times SID reel speeds. And the number eight is supposedly there for uh, making corrections as a north and a south polar uh, tracking. So it basically uh, runs counter or clockwise. CG4 mount. Beautiful uh, mount. Excellent for uh, beginners who can afford it. And for those who want to upgrade but not quite ready to go to the uh, VX mounts and the really expensive stuff. Highly recommend this to, to my viewers. Um, I'm really impressed with how it's machined, how it's made. Uh, I'm an engineer by career. I, I look at a lot of mechanical stuff and I'm impressed with it. It also comes with these slow adjustment cable knobs. And uh, I run it through a few tests just to see what I could do. And what you're seeing here is the number eight speed and uh, how fast it adjusts. So there's a lot of forums where people are talking about how slow it is. And it's not designed for slowing, but the fine adjustment um, is relatively fast. That's what you're seeing here. It's being used as a controller to make an adjustment. And um, here I'm rotating uh, the wheel on the camera while it's attached to the tripod. And you can see how fast the vibration settles down. But in the defense of the mount, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the extensions that I have on the uh, telescope itself. But 
very, very quick settle time from vibration from touching it. Here's some more uh, fine adjustments while looking at the sun. And this is in video crop mode, so high magnification for the telescope at an eight speed. But you figure uh, you can get the uh, mountain tripod for 300 or less if you decide to motorize it a little over 100 and so you add the uh, polar scope you're looking at around 450 total but that's awesome that's a that's a good deal for this system so my overall opinion uh, 10 out of 10 I would give this uh, a perfect 10 um, at the price range for intermediate is, is where I would put it um, I don't see much better. Uh, like I said, if you decide to go EQ5 and up, then you're looking at all the computerized functions and stuff that, that drive the price way up. If you want to get a really good solid mount at a reasonable cost, then this is this is where you should go. Um, Skywatcher also makes a good one, but that's a European product. Uh, I recommend this one to my uh, American viewers. You can't go wrong with it. Um, there's no reason you couldn't get uh, three minute exposures with careful polar alignment and a good setup. And uh, this is one of those products that really shines. And I'm putting this video out there to try to encourage people to look into it and um, ask other people's opinions about it. But mine, uh, personally, it's, it's fantastic and um, it's just an amazing product. You, you get what you pay for, and in this case, uh, Buy it in pieces if you can't afford it all at once. But uh, definitely will make your viewing more enjoyable. And uh, you're, you're for certain going to get a whole lot better results tracking on this than you would a standard EQ1. And uh, I apologize for my voice being a little muffled. I've been really sick lately and uh, haven't been putting many videos out. But this is one that probably a lot of people are interested in. I'm sure you've read it and heard it other places, but more important than the telescope is the mount. And that is a fact. Uh, you're better off spending more money on a good mount and having a cheaper telescope than the other way around. But this is an excellent thing, uh, excellent product. Highly recommend it. Hope you guys have uh, plenty of enjoyment out there and lots of clear skies.